I'm Danny Gasparini and welcome to this segment of Penn Voice. I am joined today by Sarija Srinivasan, who is the Deputy Chief for the San Mateo County Health Department. Sarija, welcome. Thank you. Um, as I was saying before, I, I'm a, a, a huge fan of yours and also of the work that the San Mateo County Health Department does in fact tackle and, and do and all of your objectives. So um, tell us a little bit about yourself and then also the work that um, comes out of San Mateo County Health. Yeah, thank you so much. And thanks to the show for all you allow us to share with your uh, viewers. Um, I uh, have been in the health field since I was um, a little college student, um, interested in science and interested in how to make the world better and have just had a career and opportunities to make a difference on health issues that interesting people, really complicated issues, right. lots of problems to solve. And what we're about um, as the county's health department is longer and better lives for all San Mateo County residents. It's kind of a tall order. Right. We have 750,000 residents. We're about the state of, size of the state of Vermont. Um, but this is such a great community to be involved in community health. Uh, we have such great support from right. leaders at every level. We have residents who want to be healthy. Um, we want health for everybody in our community. Right. And, and as with most communities, the one thing that we enjoy here in San Mateo County is certainly diversity, um, both from age, gender, um, uh, ethnicity, um, health disparities. I mean, all of it bring a richness, but also bring um, challenges Absolutely. to the table because it's um, health isn't one size fits all um, and access issues. So tell us a little bit about some of the things that you tackle um, and and what are our challenges that you're really trying to um, make a difference and change? Yeah, you know this world well. Um, so we are the second healthiest county in the state of California and California is one of the healthiest states in the nation. But within San Mateo County, that health isn't distributed evenly. Right. Um, so we have a seven year difference in life expectancy for an African-American resident than the countywide average. And that's hard to believe here right. in 2018. So what can we be doing to focus our resources in the communities that have shouldered the greatest disparities? It's not, um, you wouldn't expect that Serena Williams would have to worry about the birth outcomes for her child. Right. But race brings with it experiences of um, stress and anxiety that we haven't totally erased even in 2018. So we have a black infant health program that works really hard to figure out what are those trusted ways to make pregnancy and childbirth uh, a healthy, joyous experience for our African-American residents. We have ways that we're trying to target which communities have shouldered the greatest disparities and how can we invest best so that there's opportunities for health for every kid in every neighborhood across our county. And how do you determine what these disparities are? Yeah, so um, public health people love data. <laughs> <laughs> we have mountains of it and it's great to work in a community like this one where that data can be used to make a difference more easily. So a recent project we worked on involved looking at, you know, at the zip code level, what's going on? What are the um, differences in kids getting, having a healthy birth, in kids reading at third grade level? And what are the communities that have shouldered the greatest disparities that help us understand what are those neighborhoods that we might need to think differently um, we haven't had the same outcomes for everyone. What are different approaches we could try? How can we learn from the community and use right. that data to make um, more of a health impact? Now, including myself, when someone's watching this program and you're talking about taking data, um, taking information that um, is already exists in our community and following it and tracking it to see if there's likely outcomes or yeah. likely um, connections in some outcomes is, is a much different way of thinking about health than I think the rest of the population. Like when we think about health, we think, um, does someone have a physician? Are they yeah. getting care? Is there a hospital in your community? But you're trying to prevent some of these health disparities even before they happen by knowing what yeah. they are. And it's kind of like applying what we each want to do for our own lives and our own families' lives. You know, are we eating well? Are we getting exercise? Are we drinking water? Are we getting enough sleep? But when you take those patterns and look across the communities, what can we learn about what hasn't gone right from a health perspective? And um, our county health officer, Dr. Scott Morrow, whom you've met, I think, mm -hmm. and has been on this yes. program, 
So we're, as public health, we're saying, not just for each of us as individuals, but for the community as a whole, what can we extract and how can we look at that to really invest well so that we get to great lives, long lives, uh, high quality lives for everybody in our community. And the science of doing that in public health has really accelerated. So we do have data at our fingertips from years, from generations that we can bring to bear and take to our community residents and say, this is what our data are telling us. Help us understand this. How can we be a better partner? How can we you know, get to those great outcomes that we all want? So tell us about some of your partnerships. Um, you obviously work with a lot of great health organizations and nonprofits within your community. How, how do you then extrapolate all this information that's coming from a lot of different segments? Yeah, I mean, none of this do we do our alone. And so every school, every city, every uh, jurisdiction is a partner to ours. And for example, in this work in these neighborhoods, um, we have leaders that are willing to sit around tables and help us validate, you know, Mm -hmm. Does, is what the data telling us what we think it means. We have people who know, um, who do people trust in a community? A faith leader, a principal, mm -hmm. a teacher, so that we can really understand what's going on in a community. City leaders that are working on walkable streets or safe neighborhoods are helping to create health. Um, you know, the, the school principal who's thinking about suspension rates is helping to think about health. So. We're really lucky in San Mateo County that people want to come to the table and solve problems. Right. And um, we have a lot of shared goals. Um, we're 15 years into universal health insurance for children. That's lots of partnership, lots of effort, lots of sitting around tables and making decisions together You know, in the interests of our community. Right. So what are some of the greatest challenges that we face today? Yeah, there are a few. <laughs> <laughs> um, our demographics. Uh, we are an aging community and it is awesome to live with the wisdom of our elders, you know, right around us. But we, San Mateo County, are going to have more people over the age of 80 faster than most places in the country. That brings with it health challenges, mobility challenges. What do we have to do differently if people can't drive to get what they need? What do we need to do differently if people are isolated and don't have the supports that they could count on when they were uh, getting to uh, physical activity uh, more regularly. So I'm already seeing infrastructure issues with transportation. I'm already seeing mental health yeah. issues with isolation. So, <laughs> and those are just two. Those are just two. Um, we also have a continued uh, policy challenges in making sure that um, health insurance is available for everyone. Mm -hmm. San Mateo County really worked to make the Affordable Care Act uh, successful for as many people in our community as possible. Um, we don't have the same level of alignment around that from the federal level right now. Right. Uh, we also have challenges about costs. Healthcare is an expensive investment. It's so important, but you know we need to keep working on bending the cost curve around what opportunities are available for everyone. And so conversely then, what are you doing to help combat some of these challenges? Obviously there are public policy issues um, around transportation, infrastructure, housing, all of those kinds of things as we have an aging population that even need different housing um, requirements, have different housing requirements. Um, our Board of Supervisors really thinks about these issues holistically. And the great thing about working in San Mateo County is the County Board of Supervisors, city leaders, transit leaders, housing leaders have a shared view of what, um, what can we do together and some of the public policies that San Mateo County has been able to advance have been things like a Home for All initiative, mm -hmm. in which we're really looking at what do these housing challenges mean across the age spectrum, across the income spectrum. Um, transportation is a really relevant current issue. Right. There are some issues on the ballot related to transportation that our Board of Supervisors has been active on. All of these affect health. So our role is to try to influence what's the health aspect of that? Right. What's the information that could help inform what the health consequences could be. Well, Sreeja, thank you so much for joining us on Penn Voice today. I think when we think of county services and we think of public safety or, or transportation or housing, we don't really understand that public health is really at the center of all of these different larger um, public policy issues. And I thank you for bringing that to light to all of us. And it's great to know that the county is so progressive um, in utilizing um, its rich history of data and information to, to make differences and changes in our future. Thank you so much. It's a privilege to work in this community. Thanks again, and we'll see all of you next time on Penn Voice.